Hey guys, what's up? This is Mel, and I'm here to talk about Supernatural, the two-hour season finale. That is episode 1222, titled Who We Are, and episode 1223, All Along the Watchtower, both premiering Thursday, May 18, 2017, on the CW. Now guys, the last time we had a two-hour finale was actually uh, six years ago in season six. Um, so I'm super excited to get uh, two hours of the show, even though technically... They, it, it wasn't a continuation. It wasn't like the season two finale where you got uh, to be continued at the end of 21 and then you had to go to 22 to see part two. This was actually two separate episodes that they just aired together as a two-hour finale. So with that said, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the two episodes, please go do so first. I urge you, they, they were so good so please go do that first then come back and see what i have to say about the two episodes otherwise my other video reminders are up on screen take a moment to read those otherwise let's start my 20 minute clock and let's begin with what happened in 1222 so timeline wise this immediately picks up after 1221 you get sam and dean having two to three days left to escape the bunker that they've been sealed inside the episode reminder though is the american hunters versus the british mental letters pretty much so episode breakdown for the storyline i got three different storylines going on first one being the escaping of the bunker second uniting the hunters to fight back against the british mental letters and the third one being the reverse brainwashing so pretty much the first storyline escaping the bunker pretty much is the only focus at the moment since sam and dean only have two two days to get out of there with a Lady Tony Bevel. And the only way to do that, as she tells him, is that there is a manual override outside of the bunker that reverses the lockdown that Mr. Ketch has put on the place. So day one pretty much has them exhausting the idea of possibly doing a spell work to uh, reverse all the enchantments that Mr. Ketch had put on the place. That doesn't work. This goes to day two. This goes to Dean's plan of using brute force to get their way out. And that is through forced exit, finding a weak wall and trying to break their way through. Um, Turns out that in the end, Dean actually gets to use the grenade launcher. He shoots at the wall and has a ladder on the other side of it. So Dean's able to get out of there long enough before it cr crumbles down and closes up to go outside and um, use the manual override before the air is completely gone within the bunker. So that's storyline one, number one. Now storyline number two and three kind of take place um, along the same lines as each other as it splits them up. So pretty much... Um, the storyline number two is Sam un uniting some other hunters at Jody's place. Sam wants them all to follow him and take the fight to the British Men of Letters. So when everyone agrees to this, then it splits off from the two. You get the one storyline, which is Sam leading the hunters to take down the British Men of Letters at their compound. They infiltrate it and they destroy everyone inside as well as the base is itself. And then you have, while that's all happening, you get Dean trying to reverse the brainwashing done on Mary. And that is done through Tony's help. Mary goes inside Mary's subconscious to break down the psychic walls surrounding Mary's true self that Tony had put in place when she was doing the brainwashing. Um, just as when Dean was um, on a breakthrough from the looks of it, he's ripped out of Mary's subconscious by Mr. Ketch and they start to fight each other. In the end, Mary intervenes and um, she ends up killing Mr. Ketch. So there's that. Now the last scene of the episode shows Sam hugging both Mary and Dean after he returns home to them to the bunker and after Mary is her true self again. So there's that. Tidbit wise though, uh, we get to see Dean getting a hold of Garth and he warns him and Bess to um, uh, go to ground to lay low. We don't actually hear Garth though, but we get through that Dean side of the conversation, we kind of get the update on the fact that Garth and Beth best are both still alive uh, and they're actually hunters too or dean calls um garth a werewolf hunter um <laughs> so there's that and tally though is the fact that lady tony bevel was actually killed by mr ketch by uh, um, a slit throat you get mr ketch being killed by mary by a gunshot to the head and then you get dr hess being killed by jody as well with gunshot to the head as well as all the other british metal letter soldiers that they had stationed at that compound being killed by the hunters as well you also get a few hunters um having been killed as well um so don't remember the names of them though but not everybody on the hunter side make it out so episode 1223 let's move with that now the timeline this continues straight from where 1222 left off um as um the episode starts off um for the winchesters with sam updating them over the fact that lucifer is back and that he's going after his kid um, so there's that. Episode reminder there, oh, is the fact that they have to find Kelly Klein and Castiel before Lucifer does so, um, as he's free roaming the earth now that he's out of Crowley's, um, uh, clutches. So there's that. Uh, episode breakdown, though, is 
two different storylines actually. The first one being finding Castiel and Kelly Klein, and then the second one being stopping Lucifer. Now with finding Castiel and Kelly Klein, um, Sam knows that as the Nephilim gets closer to being born, there are going to be anomalies starting to appear. So they have to search out for those to find their location. Turns out it causes a power outage, which leads the Winchesters to the baby's location as the cabin where the source of Blackout is said to be was uh, rented out by uh, a Jimmy Novak. Um, so that's a huge, uh, huge signal right there. Um, also, with every contraction that Kelly um, experiences, um, the baby's power forms a fissure type thing that is, Castiel calls it a rip in reality, and it is a passage into another reality. He explains it as it being a, a like, a temporary uh, portal between an, an alternate reality or a parallel reality, as it were. Um, now, in regards to stopping Lucifer, the plan was to trap Lucifer on the other side of that uh, a rigor fit, a fissure rip in reality, where it's a constant battle between heaven and hell on the other, other side. It's where the apocalypse actually happens, since in that world, Sam and Dean were never born. So they, they never saved the world and everything. So, also, we get, we get Crowley, who does a spell that speeds up the closure of the fissure rip, instead of waiting and hoping that the baby's birth would close it eventually. Uh, we also get Mary getting a few punches into Lucifer with her Enochian enchanted brass knuckles um, until she's actually pulled through the rip with uh, Lucifer. Last scene of the episode shows Sam finding Lucifer's son, and he's not a baby. He looks to maybe be a preteen or a teenager um, with glowing yellow eyes from the looks of it, but he he um, his, he's in the shadow, so the only thing you really see is his eyes and the whatever feature of that part of him lights up. So there's that. Tidbit wise though, this is the episode that is Castiel's 100th episode um, of the show. So that's exciting there. Also, we find out from Castiel that he read over 70 parenting books and he took an online course about birthing processes for Kelly. So I thought that was pretty sweet of him. Um, plus it was just funny how he interprets certain things. Like when they went on a, a supply run and he bought so many diapers and he said from all the books he's read, he knows one thing. And then it's that everybody poops. And then Kelly's like, well, I can't argue with that. So that was, that was his justification for buying all those diapers. So anyways, end tally, though, or death tally for the finale, though, was Marina was killed by Lucifer, or so he says. All we saw was a burnt body, and he was carrying a long strip of, of red hair. So I'm assuming it's safe to assume, but with Rowena, Lucifer had killed her before, and she ended up being alive. So I'm a little on the fence about that one. Kelly is also dead due to giving birth to her baby. We knew that was coming because of the fact that uh, no uh, mother of a Nephilim survives the birth. So there's that. We also get Crowley sacrificing himself to activate the spell he was doing to speed up the fissure's closure. And then we also get Castiel being killed by Lucifer just before he was uh, trapped in the other uh, reality. So uh, a lot of major characters are actually killed in this episode or a lot of recurring characters like Kelly was recurring a lot during the second half of the season Arena, we met her um like last year or two seasons ago we met her and then Crowley and Castiel we've known since season four and season five so it the, the, this finale was a huge blow for sure but moving on to most shocking moment of the episode for 12 22 i have to say it has to be dean's speech to mary when he was inside her subconscious and i'll get to that, that in a moment and then for 12 23 the shocking moment was the fact that castiel and crowley were both killed i was not expecting it whatsoever considering the fact they're they're series regulars um but now that has me a little worried on whether or not we're actually going to see them again in the in season 13 so moving on though to top three moments two top three favorite moments that i had uh let's start with 1222. And I'm going to go in order from when they happen, though. So um, first one I really liked was Sam and Dean talking um, talking when they're stuck in the bunker. This is before Dean gets the idea of the grenade launcher. It was very interesting to have Sam and Dean both t talking about how they thought things would end for them. And while at conventions, uh, Jensen and Jared have always brought up uh, being asked the question of how you think the brothers, if the season were ever to end, how do you think they would go? And they always said in, in like go out fighting or blaze glory and it was very interesting i think this is the first time in the show where sam and dean have actually s um sat down and really told each other what they th how they thought it would end for them 
And because I know Dean has mentioned a few times in the past that he had hoped that Sam would be able to walk away from the life and find a girl and settle down and stuff like that. And Sam had hoping maybe on some level that Dean could do that too. Um, but to actually have them sit down and say like, no, I thought we'd be going out fighting, blaze of glory uh, type of thing. Um, so it's very interesting to have them have that moment, especially to them when they think that this is going to be, this is essentially their last hours and they're trapped in the bunker ready to die. So I like that they, that we got that moment that they were able to, be on the same page, I guess you could say. And then it was great to have from that conversation, it gave Dean the idea to use the grade. Nade launcher would be with, we've been waiting for so long for him to use. So it was great to see him actually use it in this moment. So there's that. Um, second favorite moment for me has to be Sam's speech to the hunters and trying to tell them why he wants them to follow him in, in the fight against the British Mental Letters. I really liked it. It's something it gave me goosebumps when he was explaining it. He was explaining how he, them as hunters were different as the British Men of Letters, how they knew the difference of right and wrong. They knew um, their sole purpose of what it meant to be a hunter, and then him drawing on that, and then him taking responsibility over the fact that he got duped by the British Men of Letters, and he wanted to rectify that. And just, it was really great to see him take that leadership role, to take charge and all that, and just really... It was a very powerful speech for sure. Um, it was very well done. And then also you see Tony's reaction in the background as if as if she's being shed new light on the situation or so, of what type of organization, organization she was part of. And then you see Dean and he had like this proud look on his face because back in that bunker, Sam told Dean that he was hoping that he didn't have to lead and it was easy. he thought it would be easier to just follow, which is what he did with the British Mental Letters. And then with the speech, he, he wanted people to follow him. He wanted to be the leader in this and take charge. And it was a great thing to see Sam step up. And I really liked how that it was included. And, and also to have, despite Dean being injured, it was great to see Sam take this forward on his own without Dean, even though he tells Dean that he'd rather have him banged up and bruised than take 10 other hunters with him to back him up. It shows how much um, faith and trust that they have in each other. But I did like the fact that Sam did follow through with it on his own, essentially, without Dean, because this is something he had to do on his own. But I really love that speech for sure. Which moves to the next speech I fell in love with. It was Dean's speech to Mary when he was in her head trying to snap her back into wanting to fight for them. Now this, this was a very powerful speech because for Dean, I felt like this is something he has been bottling up for so long and he finally got to say what he needed to say. And in this speech, he, he pretty much tell, he confesses to Mary everything he had to deal with in order to protect Sammy. Well, on some points, um, he's pretty much tells her, um, what Sam had to go through, all the troubles that he couldn't stop Sam from experiencing because while Dean was a brother, he had to take on the role of being a mother and being a father to Sam. And doing so, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't stop him from being... He couldn't stop um, Jess being killed. He couldn't stop Sam from being possessed by Lucifer. He couldn't stop him being tortured in hell. He couldn't stop so many things that happened to Sam. And it hurt Dean every time. And that was only the half of it. The fact that Dean was even willing to express this all on Sam's behalf in a way um, was really powerful and it really it really took my breath away how Jensen portrayed that scene it's truly well done amazing work and I kind of wish he kind of brought up what he had to go through all his tortures all of his obstacles all of his um, issues that he had to deal with because of the fact that Mary had left them the way that she did and essentially it wasn't theoretically it wasn't her fault she didn't know that making the deal would end up with her death or anything but like the fact that it also comes back to the when she came back she left them again type of thing so either way bottom line though Dean gave a very powerful speech and I love that little clip where it showed while in the subconscious Mary was trying to ignore Dean and pretend that he wasn't there in reality the Mary that was still in a deep sleep she was crying she was silently crying which you know which tony took notice of so it was really great to see that even there she like deep down mary was affected by what dean was saying so 
I really love that speech. It was truly powerful. It was very well done. Um, definitely a very, both, this episode definitely had many moving speeches from the Winchesters. So I'll, I'll give you that though. Which moves to my next favorite scene of the episode. And it was the fact that we got a family hug between Sam, Dean, and Mary at the very end of the episode. I really liked that. It was very well needed. Um, I don't think we've had that um, before or had them come to this point together um, since Mary's return. So I really like that we got a scene like that for them. So I really like that. Now moving on to 1223 though. First favorite I had was the fact that we got to see Bobby Singer again in the wasteland reality where it's a constant war between heaven and hell. Granted, he didn't know who Sam and Dean were, but just to see Bobby again was just fantastic. When I saw him, I was like, oh, is it possible that they're going to take him over to the Fissure and have him live in their reality and kind of bring Bobby back that way? But then it kind of closed with him already there, I'm assuming, so it's like, maybe not. But it was great to see Bobby again, for sure. Second favorite of mine has to be the fact that Crowley knew... Crowley made it a point of saying that when the world is coming to an end, he knew which side to be on and... It, that was the side of Sam and Dean. He said that he would he would always pick their sides if it ever came to whatever world-ending crisis against the Winchesters. Crowley would always go with the Winchesters winning. So I really like that. It definitely, um, coming from Crowley, that's like a huge thing because he's supposed to be their enemy. He's supposed to be the one thing that they're trying that's trying to stop them or delay them and everything. So it was really great to hear him say that to them, especially with what happened to him in this episode. Um, so that was something as well. Another favorite of mine was the fact that we got a little bit of um, baby knowledge from Castiel. It was very interesting to see his interpretations of, uh, of what preparing for the arrival of a baby is. And then just his attempts to try to comfort Kelly when he didn't really, he can't really understand what was going on. He only knew like um, logically what it was what could be happening but you can't really relate to her in that sense so it's very interesting to see um castiel trying to deal with the upcoming baby uh, arrival so there's that um moving on to top three peed moments i had nothing wrong to say about 12 22 on the other hand was my peeve over the fact that castiel and crowley were both killed i mean no I mean, the fact that Crowley sacrificed himself really showed uh, great growth in his character. Um, but still, that's another character gone. And it's just like something that you don't, you wish not to see. And then Castiel, just moments after he had finished doing whatever damage he did to Lucifer on the other side, he comes back, the boys are relieved, and then to have Lucifer literally stab him in the back and kill him, it was, it was painful. Painful to watch, for sure. Uh, moving on, though, to what will I remember most when I look back on these two episodes. For 1222, the whole fight between the American Hunters and the British Mental Letters and the fact that the Hunters won, that's going to be a huge one since I've been waiting for that to happen um, since um, they announced that they were going to kill the Hunters. So there's that. Also, the speeches, too, are going to be a huge thing going to remember for the episode as well. And then for the finale, for 23, I'm going to remember the fact that Sam and Dean pretty much lost everyone that they've connected themselves with um, heavily in this season. Castiel was just killed. Crowley, the, the devil they know and would rather align with, is now dead. Um, so there's that. And then Mary just got pulled in the wasteland with, um, Luc with Lucifer. So it's like everyone they had just deemed as family to them is now gone. At least thankfully there's a lot a lot of other hunters that they've associated with like Jody or Garth. They're not they're still there, but like it was it, it was a huge blow in those final moments of the, the episode that they pretty much lost one person after another and after another. So there is that. Uh, random questions though. Let's move on to that very quickly. First one, are Castiel Crowley and Rowena really dead? I'm still not sure about that because like I said before Rowena we thought she was dead before by Lucifer's hands and she ended up coming back alive and well so maybe the same thing is said for this maybe it wasn't her body that he burnt her Chris maybe she had put a decoy or some sort I don't know but unless I get firm confirmation that Rowena is actually dead then I don't know I really don't know and then same with Castiel and Crowley I really hope they're not maybe they can fix it but um, I don't want them to be dead. I mean, Crowley died on, like, a very noble note. But, like, still, I don't want to... I liked Crowley's character and the type of humor he brought with him. So there's that. Second question, also. Did Crowley close the gates to hell like he promised? Or was he only going to do, do that if they ended up stopping Lucifer? 
Plus, it also has me wondering because Crowley knew the spell they needed to close the fissure and it needed a sacrifice. And if he had planned to always sacrifice himself for that spell, then does that mean he knew that he wasn't going to fulfill his part of the deal about closing the gates of hell for, for the Winchesters? That's what I'm wondering as well. Another question. Is Lucifer's son, uh, Kelly named him Jack, going to be a force of good or evil? The last moments in the episode when we see him in the shadows with his glowing yellow eyes. I mean, it should be a sign of the fact that his eyes glowed yellow instead of glowing red like Lucifer. But that smirk of his, that, that evil grin of his is what has me worried. I mean, his eyes could say that he's a force of good, but his smile is just saying, no, he's a force of evil. So I'm a little worried about that and just how much of him is actually already formed and if it's just a, how much of it is already influenced. Is he neutral? Is he already evil? Is he already good? Um, so I'm a little worried about that though. Either way though, I think he's going to be one of the possible, depending if he's evil, then he's probably going to be one of the big bads in season 13. If he's a good, he's probably going to be one of the struggles that, um, Sam and Dean have to deal with trying to pretty much raise a kid that has these huge powers and, or something. I don't know. Um, last question though, can that rip in reality, uh, um, be opened again? Can they rip open that fissure and get back to that apocalyptic world because Mary's stuck over there so I don't think Sam and Dean are just going to leave her over there um so can they open it again and if they open it again will they actually find the correct alternate reality that they need to get to her because I'm pretty sure that's not the only alternate reality I mean they brought up the reality where Sam and Dean were actually the actors at Jensen and Jared on a show called Supernatural so that's another reality in itself um so um what are they going to do with that? Also, with the whole concept of these realities popping up, it had me thinking of the multiverse that has been introduced in the Arrow, the Flash, and the Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl um, series. Um, their whole concept of the multiverse with an infinite Earths type thing. So now it has me thinking of that in regards to this whole reality thing being introduced because I thought previously that the whole actor reality was just something Balthazar created to stick them in so that they could be temporarily hidden. But if there's actually other parallel worlds out there like this um, apocalyptic um, alternate reality, then maybe it is like the uh, multiverse. And I rambled there. Sorry about that, though. But let's move on to predictions very quickly. Since this was the season finale, I can't give you any more predictions to the fact. But I can give you CW Upfront news. So last week, um, Upfronts happened and they revealed that season 13 is going to air Thursdays at 8 p.m. So it's staying in this current time slot that it's been in. So that's pretty good right there. Also, they announced that season 13 will have an animated crossover episode with Scooby-Doo. And Sam and Dean are actually going to be animated. It's not just Scooby-Doo popping up on screen and it's going to be half animated, half live action. No, somehow they're going to get Sam and Dean animated and they had a, a little preview of what that's going to look like. So I don't know what to think of this, but I'm loving the fact that they could even think of doing a crossover like this. I mean, many times in the show, they've made references to Scooby-Doo. It's a show that Sam and Dean watch as kids. So it was like, how are they going to do something like this? And is it going to be like the TV land thing we dealt with in season five? Or um, I don't know, but I'm excited to see that as well, though. But predictions on what I could think season 13 could come from based off what happened in the finale. Well, I'm thinking that Sam and Dean are, go find, are going to try to find a way to get Mary back from the alternate reality um, that she got stuck in. Um, I don't think she's just going to leave them there. Um, so that could be one thing. They all, they could also try to find some answers in regards to Castiel and Crowley, maybe. Um, and I also think that Sam and Dean are going to try to figure out um, figure out um, where exactly um, Jack um, sides on, what Lucifer's son is really a force of good or a force of evil. And depending on that, they're going to have to figure out a way on how to um, deal with that. Either raise him and try to make him this paragon of good or have him at least use his powers for goods. For good or if he's uh, a force of evil they're gonna have to find a way to uh, stop him without actually killing him because I don't think they're gonna be able to kill someone who's still technically a kid because I really think that Jack is um, either a preteen or a teenager or late 20s he's not like a full-grown adult like Lucifer is like that though um, so we'll have to wait and see um, for when season 13 comes back though but that's about it, guys. What did you guys think of the two episodes? What did you guys like about it? What do you think is going to happen season 13? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your own thoughts, theories, predictions about what you think is going to happen next. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below for both episodes. I, I upload links, promos, web clips, 
gifs, quotes, all that, all found in one place. You go check it out. A little more organized over on WordPress, but everything is um, posted through there. Also, if you want a detailed recap of the episode, a play-by-play, if you will, check out my live journal entry links down below. Um, it's a... Uh, it's a recap, jotted notes of when I watched the episode for the first time, including my in-moment thoughts, any quotes I picked up, all in the order. I capture them on as I'm, uh, as I'm watching it for the first time. It keeps stuff in order for me. It, uh, it, it keeps um, things uh, precise for me. And I just like going back to it, especially when I add uh, the GIFs that I get through Tumblr. Um, to help visually remind me of what aspects of the episode carried. So if it helps you guys, check it out. If not, um, that's what I posted. But otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, the next time I'm going to post for Supernatural is when San Diego Comic-Con comes out and they give out any Season 13 um, spoilers, and that's going to be in July at some point. So I hope you come back and see what I, have, what I find out about that. But until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.